In this video, we are going to be talking about the use of loops in a Java program. Java, or generally computer programs, execute code line by line by line. This is known as the sequential execution of code, where the program executes one line, goes to the next line and executes that line, and so on and so forth. Now we can alter the flow of a program through the use of branches. Branches such as if statements allow us to create forks in the execution of code so that certain branches execute when certain conditions are met and other branches execute when some other conditions are met. Branches are created through the use of if, else, if statements. Branches are also created through the use of switch statements. Now, sometimes we want to have a piece of, uh, a set of lines of code execute multiple times. To do that, we have to use a loop. And so, in this video, I will walk through some of the basics of creating loops in Java. So, to start off with, we shall create our Eclipse project to work with loops. So, I'm going to create a new Java project in Eclipse. And I'm just going to call this project Loops. Within this Java project, I'm going to create a new Java class file. And I'm going to call this class file. And so uh, I'm going to call this class file counts and sums. And the purpose of this is I'm going to use, I'm going to illustrate the use of loops uh, and uh, through the use of, uh, through demonstrating how one can count up. Uh, or down in uh, Java and how also one can sum in Java. So I'm just going to call this counts and sums. That's the name of the Java class and this class has a main method. And so here's my Java class file counts and sums. Now There are multiple types of loops in Java, and uh, one of the one of the simpler types of loops that one can write in Java is called a while loop. And uh, a while loop, really, all loops require certain pieces of information. A while loop requires three pieces of information. The first piece of information a while loop needs is a point at which to start the loop or some sort of initializing condition. The second thing a while loop needs is a terminating point. When should the loop be stopped? So we need to tell the loop the point at which to stop the loop. We can call this the terminating condition. And so two pieces of information, one is an initializing condition and one is a terminating condition. The third piece of information a loop needs is a way to get from the initializing condition to the terminating condition. So some modification is needed, right? And this modification could be an increment of some sort or a decrement, some way, some modification that takes place while the loop is running to get from the initializing 
condition to the right from the initializing condition to the termination con ter terminating condition we need some modification to get us from the start to the end so a while loop requires these three pieces of information okay now we're going to illustrate the while loop through a very simple example a count a count of numbers from let's say 0 to 10 I'm going to show you how to write a loop that will count from 0 to 10 now again a loop needs three pieces of information I want to count numbers from 1 to 10 numbers from 1 to 10 these are whole numbers that I'm counting from 1 to 10 so obviously these numbers in some way represent integers right so uh, I need to have an integer that goes from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 78 to 9 to 10 and once it gets to 10 I want it to stop so let me first set up the initializing condition or you know the point at which to start the loop now since I'm counting from 0 to 10 these are whole numbers integers so I'm gonna have an integer i an integer i that I start off at 0 this is the initializing initializing condition it's not really a condition but it's the initialization point in a way now the next thing we need to do is we need to specify the point at which to stop the loop and here's the way you do it and this is where the while loop really like takes form you have to specify while while we have to specify some sort of condition inside those curly braces now the condition in my case is when do I want to stop the loop I want to stop it when something is less than or equal to 10 right where something is less than or equal to 10 now what is it that I want to be less than or equal to 10 well I is starting off at 0 and so in some way I need to get from I that starts at 0 to go all the way to 10 so as long as I is less than or equal to 10 I want to do certain things and those things I want to do right will be specified within the curly braces of the while loop so whatever is specified within the curly braces of the while loop will keep taking place as long as I is less than or equal to 10 so for instance if I wrote something as simple as system dot out dot print line I as as simple as that right a system dot out dot print line I integer I is equal to 0 as long as the value of I is less than 10 print out I and check if I is less than 10 I is still 0 it's less than 10 print out I keep doing this loop and we've just written these literally three to four lines of code let's execute this and see the effect of this as you can see on my browser uh, on the console there's this continuous zeros getting printed out I'm just gonna stop this and so basically what you're noticing is why is all this list of zeros here well I'm having all these zeros over here because obviously I is not being modified I is always 0 and 0 is less than 10 and as long as 0 is less than 10 I'm gonna keep on printing out I in this case 0 right I'm system out print lining 0 all the time now I don't like this right uh, really we would like an in some way to have our loop stop now the only way I can try to get my loop to stop is to change the value of I 
right? I need to change the value of i in some way so that i maybe goes up. And as i goes up, it comes closer and closer to 10. And then at one point, it's going to go over 10. And when it goes over 10, the while condition is not true anymore. Right? And if that's not true, the loop stops. And so the way I would do that is I would change the value of i to say the new value of i is going to be the old value of i plus 1. So I'm going to increment i by 1. Every time this loop executes, I print out i and increment i. And I print out i and I increment i. And after incrementing i, I check, is this new value of i less than 10? If it is, print out i, increment i. Is the next value of i less than 10? And if it is, print out i, increment i. And this over here now gives me numbers from 0 to 10. This right here is our increment. i is equal to i plus 1 is our increment or a way to get from our initializing condition to our terminating condition. And so this very simply is what is known as a while loop. A while loop has three pieces of information, an initializing condition, a terminating condition, and some modification while the loop is running to get from the initializing condition to the terminating condition. Right? In this case, I'm using this loop to count from 0 to 10. Now, this portion over here is known as an increment. There are many ways to do this increment. Another way one can express this in increment is through this terminology i++. i++ is literally the same thing as i is equal to i plus 1, right? It also increments i. So I can, and so what you're going to see is uh, i is equal to i plus 1 used interchangeably with i++. It does the same thing. Again, print out numbers from 0 to 10. Now, just like you can have numbers going up, you can have numbers coming down. So I could actually initialize i instead of starting it off at 0, I can start it off at some other number, right? And so before I show you that, I'm just going to throw some system out print lines over here. Just like you can count numbers up, you can count numbers down. So let's say if I wanted to count numbers down from 10 to 0, how would I do that? Well, again, I would need an initializing condition. So let's, instead of using i, let's use another, um, uh, another variable to hold our starting value. I'm going to use the value j, the variable j, and I can say, well, j is greater than or equal to 0. So as long as j is greater than 0, I want to I want to print out j. And after printing out j, so if j starts at 10, the next value of j should be 9. And so I can say something like j is equal to j minus 1. This is a decrement, right? And what this is going to do is it's going to decrement j by 1. Is It's going to check if next uh, go around of the loop, it's going to check j is still greater than 0. If it is, print out j once again, decrement j, keep doing this. And so I have a count of numbers going up from 0 to 10. I have a count of numbers 
going down from 10 to 0. Now, again, I can express j is equal to j minus 1, or I can also do something as simple as j minus minus. j minus minus is like i plus plus, but in the other direction, right? You get the same result. Now, and so here's a, here are two uh, examples of loops just, you know, allowing us to go up, allowing us to go down. And so really what you'll need to gather from here is that whatever specified in the terminating condition is a way to terminate the loop, right? The most generalizable form of the while loop is the most generalizable form of the while loop is while you specify the condition and as long as that condition is true do whatever is specified within the curly braces that's the most generalizable form of the while loop while a condition and as long as that condition is true do whatever is present within the curly braces the purpose of the increment the purpose of the decrement is all to make the condition go from true to false right we want to move from true to false so that we break out of the loop okay we can use these kinds of loops to do some interesting things like for instance calculate the sum of numbers so let's say we wish to sum numbers from well 0 doesn't add anything so let's say we want to sum numbers up from 0 to 10 or sorry from 1 to 10 how would one do that well, again, I want to use a loop to do this, not, you know, do it manually. So if I want to use a set of numbers, uh, if I wanted some numbers from uh, 1 to 10, uh, I need to have a loop that counts up from 1 to 10. So again, let's say I have a variable, I'm going to call this k in this case, starting off at 1. And I have a loop that takes k all the way to 10. And I need to do something while k is going from 1 to 10. Right? And so k starts off at 1, while k is less than or equal to 10, k plus plus. This moves k all the way from 1 to 10. I want to sum up numbers from 1 to 10. So really what I want to do is I want to go something like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 all the way up to 10. So the way to think about it is you want to add k to k after it has been incremented by 1. Right? So increment k and add that k to uh, the old value of k. So that's really what we want to do. So we're going to store this addition somewhere. And so what I could do is I could say, okay, I'm going to have an integer called sum that starts off at 0. Right? And I'm having sum that starts off at 0. And every time I go around in the loop, what I want to do is I want to change sum. I want to change sum by adding k to sum, right? And so if sum starts off at 0, the first go around of this loop, what's going to happen is that sum is going to change by adding 0, which is the old value of sum, plus k, which is 1, so I'm adding 1 to 0, and I'm going to get the value 1. So the new value of sum is going to be 1. Next thing I do is I increment k. k goes up to 2. 
2 is less than or equal to 10. And so now what I'm going to do is 2, the value of sum, which was 1 after the first go-around, I am adding the next value of k, which is 2. So I'm adding 1 plus 2. And then I'm going to add 1 plus 2 plus 3, right? And so basically what's happening is that in every go-around of the loop, I am totaling the previous versions and adding the next value of k. And I can do this. And outside of the loop, after I run through all of this, I can print out the value of sum. I can also throw some for some kind of printouts, uh, system out print time right there. If I do this, sum of numbers from 1 to 10, 55, right? Actually, I might not even want to have that because I already have it up there. There we go. So if I run this, Sum of numbers from 1 to 10, 55. There we go. Now, what is the consequence of putting this inside the while loop? Let's examine that. I'm going to copy and paste the system out print line. And after I have calculated the sum, I want to print out the value of sum. If I run this, I see that if I put it inside the while loop, I print out sum, I print out every calculation of the value sum. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 15, and so on and so forth, giving me at the end 55. Right? So if you put the system on print line inside the loop, you're going to get every value of sum as it's recalculated. If you put it outside the loop, after the calculation is done, you just print out the value of sum. In this case, 55. Now, while we are, you know, uh, counting numbers up from 1 to 10, counting numbers down from 10 to 0, summing numbers from 0 to 10, one can also think about Okay, what if the user wanted us to sum up numbers, right? Sum up numbers from 1 to some number that the user specifies. Let's say the user specifies like 99. Sum up numbers from 1 to 99. Well, how might we think about doing that? Well, first of all, we've got to get user input. So we can think about importing the Java class, scanner. So I can import the scanner class in Java. And since I want to work with scanner, I want to make a scanner object. I want to declare and initialize a scanner object. So I can say scanner input is equal to new scanner. So I have a scanner object that's ready to take user input. Again, I'm just going to have a system art print line over here. And I'm going to prompt the user, right? Again, I want to, I want the reason I have prompts is so that the user knows that some input is expected. So I'm just going to say, you know, please enter a number to which you want the sum. So again, I'm just going to prompt the user. And then I'm going to take the number. I'm going to basically say, OK, I'm going to take an integer. Let's call this n. OK, 
Now, I want to sum numbers up from 1 to n based on whatever the user types in. So I'll have a val variable. Let's call this m that starts off at 1. And I'll say while m is less than n, right? Well, instead of calling it n, I'll call it the number, right? While m is less than the number that the user has typed in, I want to do certain things. Uh, I've already used sum over here, so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to reset sum back to zero for the second go around. I'm going to basically, you know, keep incrementing m. So I have to increment m, but before I increment m, I have to add m to sum. And then outside the loop I can print out the sum of numbers from 1 to the number is sum. Please enter a number which I want sum. Let's say I want sum of numbers from 1 to 99. Sum of numbers from 1 to 99 is 4851. Right? Just that simple. Okay. And so this is a while loop. Uh, these are different ways to use the while loop. One of the things that you all can think about doing is some practice work. And for practice work, I want you all to write me the 99 bottles of beer on the wall song. The song goes like this. 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer, So here's your practice work. Look up 99 bottles of beer on the wall song. And what I want you all to do is try to recreate that song because it goes from 99 to 98 to 97 to 98 to all the way up to no more bottles of beer on the wall. And so write the loop that allow you to generate that song automatically. Right? That is your practice work. Okay, and that's a little bit about loops.